Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're going to be taking a look at a card. I'll be honest with you, right? I'd overlooked it. I had completely overlooked Eldegoss. I had assumed it was a fairly bad card, that it wasn't going to see much play, and I was getting ready to show it to you in a roundup video later in the week with a bunch of other cards. And then it started popping up in deck lists doing really well over in Japan, and it has become rather evident to me that this is a good card with a fair amount of potential, and I might have been a little bit wrong about it. So let's have a look, shall we? Now, starting off, we've got ADHP, which is very, very low, but not low enough to use Professor Al's lecture. The weakness of fire is not great with all the welder decks running around, but again, you've only got 80 HP, so who really cares at this stage? Retreat cost of one is really good because you've got U-turn board, etc. And it's a Pokemon you're going to want to get out of the active after using it. It's not going to stay there for the whole game. And you are a grass Pokemon, which does give you access to a bunch of healing. Things like Life Forest, Prism Star, and Gardenia, and Shaman, etc. But then again... You've got 80 HP, and for what it's worth, a pretty bad weakness, so it's not something to get particularly caught up on. Um, you are hitting weakness against stuff like Red Jirok V and Stone Journey V, which has actually proven to be pretty good already. But but again, this, this is not really an attacking Pokemon. Um, yeah, none of that's particularly relevant. What is particularly relevant is the first attack, which the lovely David Hockman over at LimitlessTCG.com slash translations has translated as the brilliantly named Fluffy Blessing. Search your deck for free grass energy and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way that you like. Now, when it says... Bench Pokemon, it means not your active. It means you cannot use this to accelerate energy to Eldegoss. Now, having said that, do you really care? Like, seriously, does anyone actually care about this? Because you can only use one energy to attack anyway. Maybe if you put a non-grass energy on there and then search for a grass, but no. All right? No. Although, to be clear, the fact that it is a single colorless energy is great, because it means that this can be used in any deck whatsoever. Having said that, you can only search for grass energy. But what you could do, it's a little bit weird and awkward, but it would work, is play, say, a fire deck with Welder, and then just play free random grass energy, and then search for them with this attack when you use it once. It's a little bit weird, and I don't think it's going to actually be terribly useful all the time, but it will at least give you an option. And what this essentially does is it allows you to build up other Pokemon far more easily. It lets you leave other Pokemon on the bench and build them up rather spectacularly. Now, I told you this is seeing play, and it is seeing play. And one of the decks with which it's seen play so far is with Snorlax V and Snorlax V Max. They are the main attacker. Although there is also Celebi and, no, Venusaur and Snivy, the second one. That one's in the deck as well. We'll talk about that in a moment. So if we have a look at Snorlax V, it's a big, powerful Pokemon that's also very energy hungry. Three colorless energy, 60 damage, and heal as much as you did. Or four colorless energy, 170 damage, and you go to sleep. Really big damage, but you need to find a way to get the energy on there. And you could play a fire deck and use Welder. And you could use Psychic Energy and play Malamar. But this works very nicely indeed. Now, Snorlax V Max, we thankfully actually have an English version of it. And what we see here is one attack. But again, it's a very, um, it's a very energy hungry attack. Free colorless energy, 60 damage, plus 30 more for each of your bench Pokemon. Now, in reality, you should always have a full bench here, and you should be hitting a fairly easy 210. Now, because this is an evolution Pokemon, you do actually have the option of using triple acceleration energy, but you can only play four of them in your deck, and it falls off at the end of your turn, and I'm not saying it won't work. I am saying it's awkward. And... Not a lot of people are particularly going to always want to do that. 
So this just gives you another option. And it's not like we've not used attacks like this in the past. There was a Victini that came out in Unified Minds, and that's got an attack. A very similar attack, mind you. It's for one fire energy, you search your deck for up to two basic energy of different types, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Well, that's two energy rather than three, and they've got to be of different types, and it's for a fire energy. This is for a colorless energy better, searches for free energy better, can attach them to the same Pokemon better, but is limited to grass energy. But if all you want to do is accelerate grass energy, this is perfect. Now the Victini seen play in some decks with Keldeo GX and Arcus and Alga and Palkia, which incidentally was great for those, because you've actually got a deck that relies on a mixture of both water and metal energy, so that's kind of cool. So why would this not work in a deck that wants to use grass energy? I mean, the biggest issue here is, of course, that it is a stage one Pokemon, so you have to wait a turn. You can't just do it straight away. You've got to wait a turn to evolve up. Now, having said that, there is another gigantic advantage here, and that is that the Gossifleur that we can use has an attack for one colorless energy, Search your deck for up to three basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench, shuffle your deck afterwards. We've seen Call for Family style attacks a lot in the Pokemon TCG. It is not a new attack, and this is Call for Family incidentally, and it, it's not a new attack. We've seen it a lot, but we don't often see it for three basic Pokemon. Now, we do have free options at the moment, legal in the format, that help you search for free basic Pokemon, but none of them are as good. We've got the Shaman from Ultra Prism, but you've got to search for free Pokemon of different types, so that's a bit annoying. We've got the Mesprit from Unified Minds, but you have to use a Psychic Energy, which is a bit annoying. Now, to be fair, we do have the Dunsparce from Celestial Storm that lets you search for free basic Pokemon and then switch to the bench. But this is better than Dunsparce because then you can evolve up into Eldegoss. And it really is the pair of Pokemon here, which is so useful. You use Gossifleur nice and early on, turn one if you go second, one colorless energy, search for three basic Pokemon, now you've got your basics going, then you evolve up Eldegoss and start attaching grass energy. And you're only giving up one prize, so in a Snorlax V and Snorlax V Max deck, giving up one random prize with this isn't really going to matter. If your opponent KOs this, they've still got to KO three Pokemon V to win the game, or two Pokemon V Max to win the game. The other thing is, at the moment, if we look at all of our gusting options, most decks, and I'm not saying all, but a lot of decks at least, are moving to I'm playing Great Catcher. And the thing is that Great Catch will only gust an EX or GX, which means they can't gust your Pokemon V. So in a Snorlax V deck, there's nothing for your opponent to gust. Obviously, Venusaur and Snivy is a GX and can be gusted. Otherwise, your opponent's got to play Custom Catcher. But even if they're playing Custom Catcher, they've got to draw into two of them. And they can only do it twice during the game. So if they do gust something, it's one of their only two gustings during the game. And you can set up behind this. I've mentioned using Lily's Pokedol in a bunch of videos lately, where you basically just set up behind it because your opponent doesn't have the gusting. Well, it's a very similar thing here. Chuck these Pokemon active, and your opponent either takes a meaningless prize or has to gust around, which they might not be able to do. As a side note, Venusaur and Snivy here, 4 energy, 160. Not to mention the really nice ability that acts as a gusting effect in and of itself. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it's a really useful Pokemon. We do also have a GX attack, free colorless energy, 50 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. And if you've got at least two extra energy attached to it, heal all damage from each of your bench Pokemon, which could be really good healing for Snorlax. So that's kind of fun. If you're looking for a grass-hungry deck, we don't have good energy acceleration, not like other types do. Is this perfect? No! Is this the best option we've got for grass energy acceleration? Probably. And like I say, later in the week, I'm going to show you at least one deck 
that uses this and has done really rather well. So let's give the pair of them between three and four wussies. We don't give half wussies. That would be barbaric. I think this is a really good, genuinely viable, legitimate deck. But I would be very excited to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays where we talk about a whole bunch of games that are lacking in pokemon but are not lacking in awesome but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.